Okay. All right, so what we're doing today is something different, obviously. Woo! I'm taking a member's comment and I'm going to read it and then I'm going to answer it. And I'm not going to reveal who it is. So if you want me to reveal, you'll have to tell me in future because otherwise I'm going to go with privacy, even though it's a public comment, but just in case. All right, so I'm going to read it to you first and then we're going to go back through it and I'm going to give my commentary. And your job, for those of you watching, is to spot the mistakes because while it's not your fault and blame isn't the same as responsibility, you can only do what you can do. And if you want to have something different in the future, that means you have to do something different in the future. So if you want to be able to have a different outcome, you have to make different choices. And you don't have control over what anybody else does. You only have control over what you do. So it's not about it being your fault. It's about it being your responsibility to change where you can, to be more effective. And not just to change where you can, but change where you want to. Because you may be able to change and be more effective, but you might not want to make those changes because they go against your own truths and values and beliefs. So never change for someone else. But if something isn't working for you and there's a better way to be more effective that won't interfere with your values and beliefs, unless they're self-harming, then maybe change. Try it out. See what can happen. All right, let's read this comment. Okay, so he says, my ex-girlfriend was with me all day on my birthday a few weeks ago, having fun, and later sent a heartfelt and long message about how I made her life complete. And she complimented me and talked sweetly, even adding the diamond ring and heart eyes emojis and calling me her forever. Then she left me and blocked me three days before her birthday. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't laugh, but uh, this sounds like a romantic comedy that went awry. Okay which was yesterday acting like she had the time of her life on social media with family and friends. My birthday comes a week before hers. We are the same zodiac signs. We share a similar background and do similar activities. I've known her for four years. We used to call each other soulmates. We talked for an hour on the phone and everything seemed fine. No arguments, no abusive behavior. I'm not a toxic person. I don't abuse people or make demands. I treat her with respect and gave her love and support. I was faithful, but I did tell her I had cheated on an ex over seven years ago. I learned my lesson a long time ago. She told me her mother was calling and I asked if she would call back and she said she would try, but she never did. Does this mean she wanted to keep the door open as an option? Let me know what you think before I get to what I think. I really felt a connection with her. Originally, she always chased me. Every time she blocked me, I tried to reason with her, but didn't outright beg. I would send her one long paragraph and then stop, then go into no contact. Weeks later, she would contact me. I'm not an egotistical person. I may joke about things that I'm good at, but I'm not a jerk about it. That being said, I told my ex-girlfriend several times that I was there for her and she could talk to me. I told her I wanted to understand her better and hear about her feelings and thoughts. But her excuse, reason, was she was not good at explaining things. Mind you, she has autism and a speech impairment. Though I'm not sure she actually has a speech impairment. For the most part, her speech is fine. Okay, so I have several thoughts. What are your thoughts? Did you write some thoughts down? Thoughts as in thought, not as in... All right, so let's go through this again and we're gonna break it down. I wanna go into a break dance, but I don't know how. Well, my ex-girlfriend was with me all day on my birthday a week ago, having fun and later sent a heartfelt and long message about how I made her life complete and she complimented me and talked sweetly, even adding the diamond ring and heart emojis and calling me her forever. So three red flags in the first paragraph. What are they? Well, it's great that she spent, you know, the full birthday with him, but making her life complete. Hmm, that's something you say in the movies. That's not something you should actually feel in real life. No one should complete you. You should complete yourself and someone else compliments your life. Now that might not be actually how she feels, but she's using the language. So the next thing is complimented me, talked sweetly, that's fine. Even adding a diamond ring and heart eyes emojis. Red flag, how long have you been together? A diamond ring means forever. It means like marriage. It means, are you going to propose to me? Depending on how long they've been together, it may or may not be an appropriate time for that to happen. It's a red flag that she should ask for it, especially with an emoji. And calling me her forever. Again, red flag. How long have you been together? This is stuff you talk about in person. I don't care how old you are 
how young you are. If you've not had enough practice having real life in-person conversations, these are not conversations you have by text or voicemail. All right, next paragraph. Then she left me and blocked me three days before her birthday, which was yesterday, acting like she had the time of her life on social media with family and friends. My birthday comes a week before hers. We are the same zodiac signs. We share a similar background and do similar activities. I have known her for four years. All right, let's break down this paragraph. Uh, la la la. She left me and blocked me three days before her birthday. All right, red flag. She gave no indication why she blocked you. Red flag. And then acting like she had the time of her life. That's pretty normal. She is either having the time of her life or she's just wanting you to think so. Maybe that's a yellow flag. One thing I did want to comment on is that zodiac signs have absolutely nothing to do with relationship success. I know it's a crazy thing, but that's what the studies show. So don't put too much effort or faith in zodiac signs. That can be limiting. Share a similar background and do similar activities. Okay. So the positive in this paragraph is that a similar background, that can be good for relating, of course, and same with similar activities. You want to be able to do some things together and knowing someone for four years means you probably know them well enough if you've been close to know who they really are. So that's actually a good thing. Now let's move into the next paragraph. <sighs> we used to call each other soulmates. We talked for an hour on the phone and everything seemed fine. No arguments, no abusive behavior. I'm not a toxic person. I don't abuse people or make demands. I treated her with respect and gave her love and support. I was faithful, but I did tell her I had cheated on an ex over seven years ago. I learned my lesson long ago. Okay, so let's go through this paragraph. What did you catch? Soulmates, okay, well, Yes, it's very tempting to call someone your soulmate. I believe that there's more than one potential soulmate on the planet for each of us. And the reason we think there's only one is usually because when we find them, we don't look any further. We are like, that's our soulmate. But the reality is there are probably many other soulmates. And some people are lucky enough, if you want to call it lucky enough, to unfortunately lose a soulmate. The only way you lose a soulmate really is through death their death. So if you get lucky enough to find another one, wow, you have won the lottery twice in life. If you part with someone, they're not your soulmate. They were never your soulmate. Maybe what they call a twin flame or an infatuation or an obsession or a limerence, <laughs> but they were not a soulmate. Okay, let's continue. Talked on the phone for an hour. Everything seemed fine. No arguments, no abusive behavior. I would expect not. Uh, not a toxic person. I don't abuse people or make demands. Ah, okay, did you catch the red flag in that one? It's good not to make demands, but you also have to be able to have standards, express the expectations those standards require, and to follow through on consequences if those standards and boundaries have been violated in some way. So if that's happening, great but it's not good to be a complete people pleaser or doormat because if you're a doormat, they will walk on you. Sometimes you do need to make demands. Treated her with respect and gave her love and support. Okay, for some people who think that's simping, no, that's not so. That is part of a healthy relationship. You want both people to be able to do that for each other. That's not simping, that's healthy, <laughs> yeah. Okay, I know, I'm like, I've had coffee. I was faithful, but I did tell her I had cheated on an ex over seven years ago. I learned my lesson long ago. Again, I've talked about cheating in other videos. It's not true once a cheater, always a cheater. In fact, 50% of the times, it's once a cheater, always a cheater. That means that the other 50% of the time, the person never cheats again. So don't lump them all into one category. Find out the details. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to infidelity. And then this goes for whether it's a man or a woman. Usually different reasons. Nonetheless, that's a different video. Okay, but the other part of that is that depending on how long you've been together, anytime you bring new information to the table, especially negative information that affects trust, it feels like it happened yesterday. So even though it happened seven years ago, she's experiencing it in her heart, in her psyche, in her limbic brain back there, wherever it is, as something that just happened because she just found this out. It's changed her perception of you or of him. So now she has to determine, she's like cataloging all of their experiences together to determine if he's always been trustworthy, if he's ever shown any red flags that that's happened in their relationship. This is normal, whether she's confessing or he's confessing and learned your lesson a long time ago. So there you go. Learned his lesson a long time ago. Hasn't happened again. And just as a little side note, I know this isn't about infidelity, but for people to change, 
They have to know they need to change and they have to actually put up boundaries for themselves until such time they know they can trust themselves not to engage in behaviors that are not healthy for themselves or the relationship. That's a whole other video. Watch my slut video. <laughs> okay, next paragraph. She told me her mother was calling and I asked if she would call back. She said she would try, but never did. Does this mean she wanted to keep the door open as an option? No. That doesn't mean that she wanted to keep the door open as an option. It means she wanted to get off the phone call with you without having to deal with your reaction for just saying she wants to end the call. Sorry, but that's the most likely truth. And why do people lie? So she lied saying her mother called. Maybe her mother did call and she used it as an excuse. Maybe she was just saying her mother was calling and used it as an excuse. Why does anyone lie? Man or woman, they lie because they don't want to deal with the consequences of telling the truth. And that might be because she's not good at dealing with consequences, or it might be because the other person isn't good at handling the truth. Can go both ways. Next paragraph. I know, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm delivering this in a very aggressive way, but I've just had a lot of coffee. And the cats kept me up last night. Okay, now I know you want... Okay, there's a dirty in there, but I'm gonna, let's just continue on. Next paragraph. I really felt a connection with her. Originally, she always chased me. Every time she blocks me, I tried to reason with her, but didn't outright beg. I would send one long paragraph and then stop and go no contact. Weeks later, she would contact me. Four red flags in this paragraph. Did you catch them all? Let's review. Okay, felt a connection. Good, you have to have a connection in order for a relationship to have potential. Originally, she always chased me. All right, speaking of cats, if you chase pussy, pussy will run away. Okay, so women are like cats. If you chase them, they will run. What happened in the beginning? She was chasing him. Let a cat come to you, love the cat, stroke the cat, pet the cat, be kind to the cat. When the cat needs to pull away, let the cat pull away. Let the cat go do the cat thing. And then when the cat's ready, the cat will come back to you. I hope you're catching the metaphor in here. Never chase a woman. I've done a video on the difference between chasing and pursuing. Hopefully you'll see the difference if you watch that. I'll link it at the end. Even an emotionally healthy woman will not want you to suddenly switch up your behavior and start chasing her more overtly because that's going to start to feel smothering, especially if it's a change in your behavior pattern. It's going to be like, whoa. Why are you now chasing me? Why do I feel like you're acting needy? That's not a good place to be. So either you are acting needy because you feel needy or you think you're giving what she needs. If she was attracted to you because of the way you treated her in the beginning, she's going to stay attracted to you by maintaining those behaviors. I know, I know, I'm sorry. Let's uh, continue on. Every time she blocked me, let's stop right there. Every time she blocked me, what does it say? Repeat pattern. Why does she continue to block? Because it works for her. She won't continue to do a thing unless it's working for her. You teach people how to treat you. You teach her how to treat you. If every time she comes back after she unblocks you and you take her back without having a discussion about boundaries around blocking or acting immature, she's going to continue to use that strategy. So, nothing changes if nothing changes. I tried to reason with her. Red flag number three, you can't reason with a woman in the best of times. Never mind when she's in conflict or there is conflict or there's emotional charge. Women don't respond well to logic or reason. <laughs> Not in the best of times. Women respond to how you make them feel and logic doesn't work. Sorry, I'm not the creator. I would have done it differently, trust me. It's annoying to me as well, and I am a woman. It's annoying to other women who are like me, and we are out there. And explaining isn't condoning. So just because I'm explaining and decoding why this is happening doesn't mean I agree with it. Doesn't mean I think it's okay. It's just why it is. But I didn't outright beg. You don't have to outright beg because your actions speak louder than your words. In other words, reasoning with her is like begging. I would send her one long paragraph and then stop. Okay, the stopping is good, but the long paragraph is not good. Again, the only time you're going to have lengthy, wordy uh, conversations is face-to-face, -face, in person. Not through text, not through voice messages. You have to be face-to-face, -face in person, so that you can gauge body language, words, tone, reactions, and so you can ask questions for clarification. If you can't do that, 
then you have no idea how your message is being interpreted. And a very long paragraph is going to be interpreted as either trying to use logic or trying too hard or trying to win her back, etc. and so on and so forth. Then go no contact. Now, this is potentially the fourth red flag in this because most of the time guys do no, well, and women do no contact wrong. You think that no contact means not um, responding, like ghosting them is what no contact you think it is. It's not. It's getting a life, having a life, living your life. And if she reaches out, then yes, you respond. You want to draw the cat in. You're not going to draw the cat in by ignoring the cat or being mean to the cat. You got to get her back before you can have these kind of conversations. Now, I don't know if that happened or not, but if for someone else who's been through this situation, that's the dealio on that. Weeks later, she would contact me. Okay, right. So that part is good. Like leave the cat. Weeks later, the cat will come back. Now you shouldn't be in a pattern of having this happen over and over again because it'll just keep happening over and over again. And the more ingrained a pattern becomes, just like in my sluts video, the more difficult it is to reverse. Okay, next paragraph. I'm not an egotistical person. I may joke about things I'm good at, but I'm not a jerk about it. Excellent. Yay. That's a good thing. Um, ego, not great. Joking about things you're good at, which is like subtle form of letting the other person know that you have value and you know your own value. That's actually a good thing. As long as it's subtle and it's not used when you're in a position of weakness. So when she's left you, then it's, that is like, goes back to convincing that you have all these values and traits that she should logically want. So if you're just playful, there's no tension, you're not in a position of weakness where you feel lower value or less powerful within yourself, then that's good. If not, then that's not good. Okay. And then our final paragraph. That being said, I told my ex-girlfriend several times that I was there for her and she could talk to me. I told her I wanted to understand her better and hear about her feelings and thoughts, but her excuse reason was she was not good at explaining things. Mind you, she has autism and a speech impairment, though I'm not sure she has a speech impairment. For the most part, her speech is fine. So there's only a couple of red flags in there. Let's go through it. And there's some good things. So give credit where credit is due. Told my ex-girlfriend several times I was there for her and she could talk to me. Yes, that's how relationships are supposed to work. Very good. Should be go both ways. Should be go both ways. That's my good or English. Told her I wanted to understand her better and hear about her feelings and thoughts. Excellent. Perfect. Yes, that's what women want from men. That's what healthy women want from men. We just don't want you to do that out of weakness or a pity for yourself or trying too hard or because you feel less worthy, trying hard because you want to have a connection because you both feel worthy. Great. Um, if it's because you think she's on a pedestal better than you, not so great. Remember women mirror your feelings about you, but her excuse or reason was she was not good at explaining things. Now, this is maybe a yellow flag. Maybe she's not good at explaining things. Most of us are not good at explaining things when it comes to discourse in relationships. We've never been taught. We don't know how. It's not our fault. It's not your fault. It's not her fault. That might be true. However, it is her responsibility to get better at it and to try. So yellow flag there. She has autism and a speech impairment. So if it is true that she has autism, then yes, that is an obstacle for her legit obstacle for her in communication. So fair enough. Speech impairment. I, I can't really comment on that. It may or may not be there. If you've never seen it, she may be using that as an excuse to find sympathy or not have to communicate, or it may be actually true and you just haven't experienced it yet. So overall, what have we learned? We learned that anybody who has been in a similar situation should probably watch some of the videos in my nice guys playlist. If you've ever been told that you're a people pleaser or ever felt like you're a doormat and make decisions for other people at the compromise of yourself, right? Not even compromise at the sacrifice of yourself. Red flags. Are they really red flags? Or are you just not connecting well? Or is it that your values, beliefs, and long-term goals don't match? What else? Get your ex back. Okay. So in that one, you're going to learn most likely what caused her to leave in the first place, which is often because your behavior has changed. What attracted her in the beginning has changed. You've changed how you treat her, whether it's worse or better. If it's something that feels incongruent, then she's probably going to, she's going to think about leaving if she hasn't. Rejection is another one you might want to watch, like my playlist on rejection. And what's the other one? Oh, ah, shit tests. So sometimes 
What can happen when your behavior changes and becomes incongruent with what she's used to and was attracted to, she will test you to see how you react, to see if you stand your ground, to see if you are weak. And how you respond to that, how you handle her tests can sometimes determine if she stays or if she goes. Whether or not it's good if she stays or if she goes, sometimes a good woman will test you because your behavior has changed and you can actually drive her away even if she actually is a soulmate. So it can't be all one-sided. If you're emotionally damaged and you're bringing your baggage to the relationship, then she might leave if she's not emotionally damaged. Now, if she's emotionally damaged, well, you know, what attracted you to her? Why are you attracted to an emotionally damaged woman? Again, some of those questions will be answered in some of the playlists I mentioned. So I hope this helped. And anybody else have some thoughts on this? Let me know, share your experiences, stories, and comments. And if you want me to do a video on a situation you're in, leave a comment on one of my videos. And if you're a member and it's not too long, don't write me a novella because then all my eyeballs will get tired, uh, then I might answer it in a video like this. If you like this video and want more of them, give it a like and thumbs up and big hug, big hug for this fellow. I hope you learned something. I hope I wasn't too harsh. I hope I gave you the velvet hammer because I wasn't very delicate in the delivery, but you know, sometimes that's what's necessary. So lots of love, big hug, God bless. That's it.